everyone, welcome to this video. This is Pazarine and today we are building again in The Sims 4. So a few months back, I made a tutorial on how to create a basic stop motion video with objects simply appearing and disappearing. So now I will be showing you guys how to do an animated stop motion with objects moving as they appear with and without the use of mods. If you're not familiar with what an animated Sims 4 stop motion is, it's basically similar to an ordinary one except there will be more frames and of course there will be some form of movement whether an object is being dragged across the floor, being dropped on the table, growing or shrinking through resizing, flipping from horizontal orientation to vertical, etc. It's super trendy these days and it's always satisfying to see objects move as the build comes together. This will be a little bit of an advanced technique though, so if you're new to creating Sims 4 stop motion videos or you still get confused with the process, you can check out my previous video on how to create a stop motion build for beginners as I also offer tips and tricks that might be helpful to you. The same basic techniques apply even with the additional animation, but I will also be showing you some tricks you can do with a tool mod and what happens when you simultaneously move objects together. Afterwards, I will show you guys how I edit my videos using Adobe Premiere so you can see how I arrange my frames. Note that producing a stop motion video takes longer the larger your build and even more so with additional animation. We'll walk through the entire process so for the sake of this tutorial, we'll be creating a quick animated stop motion of this apartment which was actually built by my cousin and I'm very proud of her because recently I discovered that she loves building in The Sims so I made her build this one. The entire layout is all her and the entire look is also her. I added these cabinets and this custom ceiling. So this apartment is available in my gallery so you can download this chic to be our apartment or chic to bedroom apartment. And by the way, this is something I wasn't able to mention in my previous tutorial but don't forget to save your build to your library or to the gallery before starting to leave objects for your stop motion. You will definitely need a finished copy of the build to share with your audience and followers and it will be difficult to recover parts of your build that you have already deleted. Anyways, as always, when it comes to preparing for a stop motion build, don't forget to turn on your cheats like your move objects. I'm also using The Sims 3 camera so I can move a lot easier. This is not a mod, so you can actually change this in your settings. So if you would rather use a default camera, that's fine as well. So just as I mentioned in my basic stop motion tutorial, the free cam in build mode by Twisted Mexi lets you go into free cam while you are in build mode by pressing tab on your keyboard. Meanwhile, for rotating and bringing objects down and lifting them as well, the tool mod by Twisted Mexi is what you will need. So if you're new to tool, I will leave a link in the description on how to use it and and it was made by the creator Twisted Mexi himself. This one last thing is important though, when you take your videos and screenshots, best use an external recording software like OBS or whatever comes with your graphics card because the size of the screenshots you will take in game using the C camera command will be different from the video using the V command. This will cause your videos and screenshots to be misaligned and not blend seamlessly together. I don't know why this is but it's unfortunately a thing and as you can see the quality is not the best either. I mentioned in my previous tutorial that using the C and V command is fine and it still is, but just be careful when you start to edit. It's best to just use your external software instead because I believe that is at least available for everyone. And one more thing, if this video is in any way going to be helpful to you, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It will really help and I appreciate all the love and support for my content. Alright, so now that you have everything you need, let's begin. So as usual, when it comes to stop motion videos, we start with the last room down to the first room that's going to appear with a video. So in this case, the last room is going to be the smaller bedroom. So we're going to be setting scene five, which is going to be a view of just this area in this room because this is going to be the last thing that's going to appear in the video. And so should be the first thing that we should delete. To set the scene, you press control five. And this is basically your scene five. I want to be able to move my lampshade up and down. Same with the nightstand and I want the wardrobe to be moved forward first and then back. So when you're moving objects up and down, it's going to be very difficult because the control nine key is also a key that you could use to set the scene. So this could be, this is my control five again. 
And if I rotate it to like this angle, maybe I can set these to control nine. So when I press nine, it's going to lead me here. We're going to avoid using the control nine key to elevate objects, even though that's like de facto tool to use. I don't know if I'm using that word right, but it's like what everybody uses to elevate objects without having to use mod. Same with control zero to bring objects down, but we can't use that because it's going to disrupt our transitions and going to ruin our scene. So we're going to avoid using that. So the tool mod is very useful in this aspect when you elevate objects and when you try to bring them down as well. So in order to access a tool mod in build mode, shift T, what you can do is you select this object, this lamp, and you elevate it. Usually if it's small, I only elevate it in like 0.05 because I don't want it to be too high. So it's only 0.05 up. You can see there's a slight movement upwards. And next, you also do another one. I like to do this at least three times. So I'm just elevating it upwards and I'm going to deselect it. So now that we've elevated this lamp, I'm going to press page up so it will take us above the apartment. This is what I'm doing so that the objects, you know, sometimes the pixels kind of change size or something. It's just, it's weird. It's kind of glitchy. You've noticed that sometimes when you take screenshots, the plants kind of like get thicker and sometimes it gets thinner and then they move. The trick is to go to the topmost part of your build, like maybe the third floor, the fourth floor. So just press page up until you no longer can. And it'll take you to like this area of the debug building or of your lot at the topmost part of your house. And it will be unique form all throughout so you don't have to zoom out and zoom in and worry about your walls turning white when you like hover a mouse over it because that also tends to happen like for example as you can see the white walls are you know the walls are turning a lot lighter and I don't want it to be like this because I wanted to have a uniform color so we're gonna press page up on our keyboard or you can go up to next floor button right here on the upper right I'm gonna press five again to take us right here. Don't worry about this. You're not actually selecting anything, not even debug walls. And then pressing tab again and then pressing five and it'll take us back to our scene five. The only disadvantage is that we won't be able to see if the object moves. So it's always okay to just go back and check the space yourself. So anyways, this is scene five. And since my lamp is elevated, I'm gonna take a screenshot. I'm gonna press escape again. And since my tool window is still open, I'm gonna undo. I could press options undo or control Z directly in my keyboard. As long as my tool window is open, I'm gonna press tab. And then press five again to take me back to scene five. And you probably couldn't see it, but your lamp actually moved downwards and we can go ahead and check that later. But right now I'm just gonna take a screenshot and I'm gonna repeat the process of control Z or pressing undo on the tool menu and press tab, press five again. And I think significantly you can see that the lamp has lowered. Again, take another screenshot and Control Z again, tab five. And now the lamp is directly on top of the nightstand. So I'm gonna escape and show you guys what it actually looks like with the page down. So when I press Control Y on the keyboard, it undoes it. So one, two, three. What we were doing is we were undoing the movement, like going down by pressing Control Z or undo here. One, two, three. So when it's finally down, you can actually delete this lamp. And we're gonna do the same thing for the nightstand. So shift T for tool, select nightstand, elevate. For the nightstand, it's a bit large, so we can go 0.1 maybe. So elevate nightstand, one, two, three. You can choose to take screenshots every time you elevate an object, but I'd rather elevate it all the way. So I'm elevating it three times and then undoing it and then taking the screenshot that way because I tend to make mistakes. So it's important to count how many times you elevate an object so you'll count how many times you undo it. There's no limit, but it's best if you just have like a uniform count. So for example, you want to elevate the lamp like five times or this nice stand five times as well. And the more screenshots you're going to take, the more frames you're going to have, it's going to be a longer video as well but I'll teach you guys how to make your animations very smooth so since this nightstand is elevated let's page up so we don't select any walls press 5 first and tab and then 5 again so that takes us to live mode we take a screenshot of this elevated nightstand escape control Z tab 5 
and screenshot. And then control Z again, tab five and screenshot. You can see that it was going a lot lower and you can no longer see the legs. Control Z again, tab five and screenshot. So it's already in the floor directly. You can already delete this object. Don't forget to close your tool extension. So shift T first, remove this, select the object and delete. Next is we're gonna move the mirror instead of just raising it upwards. This is when you don't need mods. So this mirror, we're going to move it in this way. One, two, three. And you notice that I was able to move the mirror like this. It's because I was pressing Alt and you can use Alt to move the object outside of the squares. I think it's very helpful and useful. And how you're going to move the mirror in like small boxes only in between squares, you can press F5 on the keyboard. This is a trick I learned from Dr. Ashley. If you don't press F5, the movement of your mirror or your object would be a lot bigger. So it's the same thing that applies to this one, this wardrobe, so F5. It moves like that, but if you're not pressing F5, it has it's moving in larger squares, like in between grids. So we're gonna be moving this mirror again, like earlier. So one, two, three. We're going to delete this. And since we are not using tool, we can just delete the object and so that it's more of a continuous animation. But for tool, I like to delete it object by object because it gets really confusing when you're using the mod sometimes. You can't just delete an object and then have it reappear again. So this wardrobe, I'm going to be moving it forward. One, two, three, and just like that. And I'm going to be going back to my live mode. So page up, five, tab. And I'm pressing five again because we're still in scene five. I'm gonna press the spacebar, take a screenshot of this area, and then press Control Z. You notice that the tool extension window is no longer around because we weren't using it to move the objects. So I'm gonna press five again, take a screenshot, and then escape. Control Z, tab five. screenshot and then another control z you can see on the left where there's like minus simoleons meaning that your object has already appeared the one that you deleted so the mirror is back same process again control z five screenshot same thing so i'm just pressing undo over and over again because i was confident that i actually moved this object you can check if you're not very sure if it moved or not that's fine last one control z five screenshot and I'm gonna press it again and you can see that the nightstand reappeared so we're done with this scene and I'm gonna be showing you guys my folder with all the screenshots so you can see it animated it's important for us to check the screenshots we've taken because it's gonna tell us whether we missed something or not I like to check scene per scene so scene 5 is done we're gonna move to scene 6 this one and I'm gonna show you another technique for stop motion in a bit but first let's check our screenshots all right so this is our screenshot folder it's under screenshot reshade because this is my designated folder when i'm using reshade i have all the screenshots here it's actually three times as much as like an ordinary stop motion because of the extra animations so we're gonna start with this one right here where the lamp is moving downwards so one two three that's what it's supposed to look like and the next one is going to be this nightstand one two three we're gonna worry about arranging all our screenshots later when we're already in premiere then we have just the ordinary movement we're gonna we pressed alt to move this forward and control z without the tool mod extension so it just goes continuously one two three and then one two three and that's basically it. So if we ever missed any movement or any frame, we can just go back and redo it if we want. What set these two apart is because I use tool again and it's difficult to use, to elevate these the normal way. You have to use a mod because control nine gets disrupted. So it's a lot better if you just use the tool mod to elevate these. And it's, it's set apart so that you won't have to worry about mixing up the tool mod with just the ordinary commands because that tends to happen. All right, so now that's done, let's go back to our game so I can show you the rest. 
So this is scene five again, just to show you guys. And we are going to transition to scene six or to scene nine. So just to show you guys that you cannot use scene nine to elevate objects, we're actually gonna set this to scene nine. So let's go back to build mode. Don't forget to press G to remove the grid off the ground. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to resize this rug. So we're gonna press the bracket key on our keyboard, the smaller one on the left to make it small. This is another technique that you can use in animation. You can resize objects instead of moving it. So that's gone. And we're gonna move the bed towards us. We can open the grid to have a guide on the movement. We don't want it to like go here and then go there. Uh, we want it to be uniform. Press Alt, hold, hold Alt, I mean, and then click, drag, click, drag, click. So it's not going over this line. Press G again and delete the bed. As for the headboard or the cutting board from Cool Kitchen, we're gonna just resize this. So we're gonna press the left bracket key, resize, resize, resize. That's it. And then we're just gonna delete this. So we press nine again to get us above the room so that we don't touch any walls. And then we press tab, nine, and then we take a screenshot and then control Z to undo and so that the curtain will appear as a really small one. And then you take a screenshot, escape, control Z so that it gets bigger, press nine and then another screenshot, escape, control Z, tab nine and screenshot. The cutting board is here, Control Z, Tab 9. It gets bigger. And then you can also continue. Let's just move this really quick because it's just the same process. We're just making it bigger. Now that everything is here, uh, we're going to delete everything again by pressing Control Y to just delete everything. So you can see it's already moving like this. So yeah, since we're done with C9, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in your screenshots folder. Okay, so we have our screenshots folder again right here. And this was the last one. This was our scene five. And this is our scene nine now. And as you can see, it's empty. So in order to check our objects coming together, we're going to just move the arrow key to the right so that we move to the next photo. And then the next photo, the album. As you can see, the bed is moving backwards. The rug is resizing and I guess we haven't missed a single part of our screenshots. Sometimes it just looks like, like that, it jumps because the sizes of your objects whenever you resize them is 1.0 or 100% and then 0.75 or 75% smaller and then 50% smaller. So it could really jump in terms of size and the smallest is 25%. You can adjust this using tools though because there's a way for you to resize objects. If you want them to grow slower, you totally can do that. I have like a couple more tricks to show you and that includes rotating objects, but we're going to be skipping some rooms now. But first, I get a lot of questions about opening the doors and this is what I said about um, a trick being shared by my friend Simon or Taffy Simo who is also a creator and he's very helpful in this regard and he's great and amazing. So how do you actually open the door in stop motion? First, you have to go to live mode. I'm going to be teleporting Timothy here, so teleport here. And he has to walk through the door first. And as you can see, the door is opening and he's just walking through. Just make sure your sim is at the threshold or at least going in. And you're going to shift click him to reset him. Shift click him again. And you can, this is helpful if you have tool, you toggle active object and you move him away from the door. The door is basically open. So I want my scene eight to be this one. So we're moving backwards from five, nine, eight, seven. So my C9 is inside. This is my scene eight. So I'm going to press tab and I'm going to press nine to go inside the door. And I want to catch the door swing. You just press one so that it's going to swing on its own. How it's going to show like it's opening is that you have to take a clip of the door opening and flip it to reverse when you already edit. So you can't really open the door in the Sims without the Sim passing through. So you have to 
remove the sim away from the door. So that's how you film like opening and closing entrances. So the next thing I'm gonna be showing you how to do is to rotate objects as part of the animation. These are paintings made by Sarina Sims, the ones that I'm using to cover the island. And I wanna be able to showcase them by rotating them. Uh, I'm gonna be using the tool mod to do that. So I'm gonna be pressing Alt and then I'm gonna be clicking on them both, just holding out and then clicking them both, select both of them. And what I wanna do is I wanna rotate them vertically. I'm gonna be typing 30, as in 30 degrees, so that it's just slightly raised. Press OK, and it's already rotating this way. We can go on the other side by pressing negative 30. I think that's a lot better. So just gonna press undo because I'd rather go negative 30 so it's going this way instead of it going this way. So. Rotate, negative 30, so it's going to be like this instead. And we're gonna rotate again to negative 30. And then another one to negative 30. It doesn't have to be 30, you can choose to rotate it slowly by typing like a smaller number, just as long as they maybe reach 90 or like on your desired angle, if that's what you'd like. So we're gonna press page up again, so we're not selecting any walls. We're gonna press tab and we're gonna press seven because this is seed seven. And if you can see like a strip at the top of the ceiling, it's because of the debug exterior of the apartment so we can we can get rid of that by pressing page down so let's take a screenshot of these two boards and then press escape so we're gonna make sure that the tool extension is appearing on our upper left or anywhere on our screen wherever we find it comfortable so Control z again so that we're undoing the tool command so press 7 because we're in scene 7 and Control z again tab 7 Take a screenshot of that. Control Z, tab, seven. And now it's back to the default. You can simultaneously rotate and move objects if you'd like. Just make sure you take a screenshot. For example, you want to move these two together like you're separating them apart. I'll show you how to do that without tool. You can actually just elevate these using tool as well. But since it's on the wall, you can alt drag this. So hold down alt, click this move it here and this one move it down here so it looks like it's gonna be separated two and then like that and you want it to be merged like that i'm gonna show you guys what it looks like and how you can take a screenshot of those two shelves just moving together i want to be able to separate these two i'm gonna screenshot them merged and then i'm gonna press ctrl z twice because i want like a double undo so that it looks like it's separated like that both of it actually moves. You won't be able to see it now, but you'll see it later when we review the screenshots. And Control Z twice, seven. And then take another screenshot of this. And this is the last one. Control Z twice, tab seven. And screenshot. And don't forget to take a screenshot every time you undo or every time you move the object. It depends on what you're most comfortable with. I'm just showing you how I make my videos. But if that's what you'd like, then that's what you should do. So yeah, this is basically the whole tutorial when it comes to production. As for everything else related to like the basics of stop motion, you can check out my other video. Again, explaining all the fundamentals. All of these are interrelated with each other. This is just a more advanced technique. I just wanted to show you guys how you can move objects and animate them. So let's arrange the bedroom at least so I can show you what it looks like when you add the frames together. Alright, so right now we are in Adobe Premiere and we're about to edit our stop motion. You can use any software you'd like, but this is just the one I prefer and what I actually use. So before anything else, it's best if you arrange your screenshots and your transitions into folders. And you can do this in File Explorer and have them uploaded to the software. And for my frames, I actually label them just like in a regular stop motion, the number of which they're going to appear before you transition to the next scene. So this is my first set of screenshots 
screenshots, a top view. And my second set of screenshots is going to be the bathroom, which is gonna be a transition from the first set of screenshots to the second. But because I only showed you how to take the screenshots of the bedroom and part of the kitchen, those are the only ones that I'm gonna be showing you. And of course the bedroom is the last room that is gonna appear in the video. So they are at the last sets of folders and that's 12 and 13. So 12 is showing the bed and 13 is showing the closet. I'm gonna be importing 12 first. So I'm gonna select this on the upper left first as the first frame and this is the last frame on the lower right. So I'm just gonna click and drag. And these are already the frames of our stop motion. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like without editing as frames only. As you can see, it's moving so slow and it's really stiff. I'm gonna be showing you how you can make them faster and the animation is smoother. So I'm gonna select all my screenshots or my frames by clicking and dragging from one corner to the other and it's all selected. And on my keyboard, I'm gonna press Control D. Control D will automatically place transitions in between frames. So whatever is set as your default transition, for mine, it's like the fade transition. It's just the dissolve one or the fade one. And it looks like this. You can actually set it to whatever kind of transition you'd like. So if you want something else, that's totally okay. I'll make sure to delete the first and the last transition though. I just want it to just stay as is basically without having to fade into black. This is the reason why we take screenshots backwards or it looks like we're building backwards in production. It's because the frames get arranged in this way. Since we are not using tool, this is how it looks like. So I want it to be faster like this, but it plays like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all my frames again, the same way we did earlier, right clicked, nest and we're gonna type in 12 because this is in folder 12 our 12th set of frames and we're gonna right click this because now since it's grouped together we can actually speed them up as a group instead of individually so speed and i want it to be fast so let's have around 400 just to see it's still not fast enough because the frames are still visible I want it to be a lot faster let's go 450 this is actually my default around 450 or 500 I think 450 is a lot better, but if it's 500, it, I think it looks so much better. You can adjust the speed in whatever speed that you'd like. I think it looks so much better this way already. And yes, this is, this is great. I'm gonna move on to the next scene. We're just gonna add the transition in between first. So immediately after this video is the transition. It's a bit slow. I kind of want it to be faster. So I'm going to right click the video transition right here and I'm going to change the speed to 150. So it's a little bit faster. And I think that's a lot better. Next, we're going to include the frames with the wardrobe and the lamp. This one's a little bit tricky. So we have to arrange the frames a bit because the lamp is supposed to be the last thing that's going to appear. And the first thing that's going to appear is definitely the wardrobe. The reason that it's like this, it's because of tool. We use tool to move this and this, and we have to separate them because it gets really tricky if you try to use tool simultaneously with just your manual movement, like you're just clicking and dragging and not using the tool mod. So if you have the tool mod used, most likely you might have to reverse some frames or reposition some frames. So I'm gonna select these four frames because this is the movement of the lamp. And next to this is already the light nightstand. So these four frames, click this set and move it over here. Same with the nightstand, click the set and move it over here. And I'm gonna click these set of frames. And in order to get rid of this space in between, because this is already like a black space and then the next frame, is you're going to select this area. And on your keyboard, it's shift delete to move the frames towards each other and to remove any empty spaces. As you can see, it's already arranged in this way. Again, it's so slow. So we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. You can actually nest it first and add a transition. So we're gonna do that actually, just to show you that you can actually do it as well. So I'm gonna form a box above the frames to select all of them. And I'm gonna right click nest. And this is set 13 because we are on folder 13. Enter. We are in folder 13 in order to get into these frames to so see this whole sequence. We're going to double click 
to get in here and now it's already separated from our main workstation and we can continue to edit the frames here while this one remains the same so let's go to set 13 and select all the frames again Control d and it's going to have the fade transition in between the frames and also the first and the last frame we have to delete the ones here this one and this one because I wanted to just start as is and end as is without the fade transition fading into black. So we're going to close this. And now that group 13 actually looks like this, we can actually speed it up as a group already. So speed the same, it was 500%. So now it's 500% faster. It will look like this in your video. So this is basically how you edit your stop motion with the extra animations. It's just the same thing, except it can get a bit complicated, especially if you use the tool mod. It's a lot of getting used to. And sometimes you will make mistakes post-production. Like you've noticed the transitions don't align with each other. You missed like a few frames. It's gonna be a bit annoying, but it's perfectly normal. And you can always find a way to fix that. So one thing you can do is you could check your frames before you transition to the next scene and you could also check your transition if it's recorded if the angles are correct you can put them side by side i'm going to be playing the full stop motion at the end of this video so thank you so much for watching i hope you learned from this video and if you have any other questions feel free to ask me in the comments i love to help in whatever way i can and also love hearing from you guys and also if you enjoyed this please don't forget to like and subscribe it's going to help a lot and also if you want to help support me further i have a ko-fi page and i also have memberships and monthly subscriptions so you can subscribe to me monthly and enjoy other exclusive rewards likewise feel free to follow me in my socials if you want to see more updates from me and also my builds are all in the gallery even this one my id is pazarine thank you so much again i hope you have a wonderful day happy simming